well, speaking of rugby league history, we, we're going to um, do a bit of history corner. We're going to do something different this week. Our old uh, our old podcast, The Hate Foundation, uh, we talked a lot about rugby league, and um, I, I thought it was time that we addressed uh, our patron saint of this show, Rex Mossop. <laughs> um, we're going to play a segment we did on, on The Hate Foundation about Rex. Uh, uh, excerpts taken from... Uh, the book The Moose That Roared. Now, I'm like, I might come across as just a, you know, a league tragic, but I'm actually a, a fairly well rounded person. I'm, I consider myself reasonably well read. But if, if I was stuck on a desert island with three books, it'd be The Grapes of Wrath, Wuthering Heights, and The Moose That Roared. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a sensational book. So um, have a listen to this. I'll, I'll, before we start, I'll say the other voice you hear is. Friend of the show, former Hate Foundation producer Thomas Orr. Shout out to Tommy. Uh, and yeah, have a listen to this. So I, I had cause this week to revisit, as you called it, my Bible. In my opinion, the greatest book that's ever been written. Rex Mossop, The, the Moose That Roared. <laughs> Is that the name? That's the name. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I, so for, for, for the listeners at home, um, the you know the uneducated lot who yeah. don't know who Rex Moss appears. Well, well, first of all, give yourselves an uppercut. <laughs> <laughs> That's step one. But yeah, so he was a, a, a bit of background. A, a kangaroo, fifty nine kangaroo, uh, yep. manly player for many years. Started in rugby union. Uh, oh, so he switched over. Switched over. Uh, played league professionally in England for a few years before coming back to manly. Yep. Uh, on, on the close, Did he, what was the reason for switching? Oh, money, right? Um, but subsequently, he's gone to trash rugby union any opportunity he gets and, and promote That's rugby awesome. league, which I love. Um, yeah, so uh, when his playing career finished, he became a uh, basically a sports host with Channel Seven. Yep. At, at that time, rugby league wasn't covered at all, and he he like really promoted channel seven getting the rights like they they asked him the channel seven director like said oh what 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 other sports do you think we should cover and rex said rugby league and the the channel seven heads going like oh yeah no no i don't know what about the uh gps schoolboy rugby union so this is the this is the tv climate of the early 60s um but then he subsequently got rugby league became a commentator and for 20 odd years was the voice of rugby league on tv in australia is he still around no, he died a few years ago. Um, R.I.P. Rex, much missed in in this studio at least. He had Alzheimer's, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So pretty sad ending. Um, but I, I, the Rex I like to remember is is found within the pages of the Moose that Roared. <laughs> <laughs> Did he uh, coin that phrase, or is that was it a coin? I, I haven't so, heard it before. Yeah. So. Well, he's, he's <laughs> a big tick in my book missed, just for the before title. Before you go into the humorous quotes, I would like to to put my two cents worth in. I remember reading this book as a teenager. I mentioned this on the show last year, I believe. But I still remember it like it was yesterday because there's this, it was just an actual, absolute snapshot of the like northern beaches in the 50s. Like it was just fucking, it was like, it might have been 1800s. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. It was, it was, it was real Wild West stuff. Um, yeah, the, the, the thing about him losing his virginity to a school teacher yeah. and he might come and visit every Sunday. <laughs> Um, but he he really he he goes beyond football, which is which is one of the things I I, I like about this book. Uh, he he outlines his personal philosophy very early on, yep. uh, something he calls the Mossop way. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, a, a couple of a couple of quotes that illustrate this: Conservative political parties will always get my vote. I have no time for the left wingers and socialists <laughs> of Labor. I'm devoted to the free enterprise system. But most politicians, I wouldn't piss on if they were burning to death. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, f- physical fitness, cool, another hey? another part of the Mossop way, another very important edict yeah. for Rex. For all our pretensions to being a, a tanned, lean, and physically fit race, too many Australian men are pathetic specimens, short of wind, <laughs> flabby, beer gutted, and most of them too weak to knock a sick girl off a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so these are still in his um, Mossop Way manifesto. Yeah, this is all part of the manifesto. Right, okay. You know? and, uh, but before you think that he's just about 
football and, and the Mossop way. You know, he, he's a, he's a, a man of many colours. Uh, he goes into the, at the end. He just starts listing things that he likes. Like, just out of nowhere, like, you know, he goes, My wife and I have a thing about Italian food. I'm not into octopus or sardines, but I love the way Italian chefs cook prawns and lobster. I think God must have been an Italiano. <laughs> <laughs> just, just the way he says Italiano. Yeah, <laughs> just a comment on food. An Italiano. <laughs> and then uh, it, also, also a big movie. It's about rugby league. <laughs> <laughs> also a big movie buff. Um my all-time great movie is The Quiet Man, starring John Wayne and directed by John Ford. Great movie, by the way. Uh, it's funny and very Irish in an idealised way. There's also a bit of biffo when John Wayne and Victor McClaglin turn on one of the best brawls ever filmed. <laughs> if I had to bet who his favourite movie star was oh, yeah. on my life, John Wayne would have been number one pick. <laughs> But uh, but you, you mentioned that the picture the book paints of the the northern beaches in the in the fifties. I think it does mm-hmm. a similarly brilliant job of um, the picture it paints of Australian TV in the sixties, and like just <laughs> how primitive and and like budget it was. So in, in addition to his his rugby league and general sports duties, he in the late sixties he hosted a show called the Club Show which was a live variety show uh, that went on Saturday nights, live from a different RSL club every week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think the show went for like two or three hours. Um, but, you know, like, yeah, you, you, you've got your lounge singers, maybe a magician, a, a comedian. Yeah, any clips of this? I haven't found any. I, I really hope they, they haven't been destroyed. Yeah. I, I hope the Channel 7 archives have them somewhere. But, uh, but in those days, those fucking idiot TV stations you, you, you used to tape over tapes. Yeah, tape, yeah, like, yeah. Fourth, then. Yeah. Like, oh, my God. I'm sure there's uh, that National Sound archive yeah. in Canberra has got a few <laughs> copies of that. But um, <laughs> it, 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 was, it was tough coordinating all the different elements of the club show. And uh, I'll, I'll read out this passage <laughs> from, from Rex. Uh, the trickiest part of presenting the club show was preparing for the live crosses to the dog races each half hour or so. (laughs) Those dogs waited for nobody. So it was my job to get all the entertainment and interviews wound up and out of the way so we could make a smooth transmission to Wentworth Park. I mean, I mean, I mean, absolutely nothing's changed. I mean, that happened on the footy show. Like, variety shows have always dominated Australian television. I know. Like, gambling's always been the master of them. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible, isn't it? So little has Australian TV changed that I guarantee you we'll see another iteration of Beauty and the Beast within the next few years. <laughs> oh, I think 100%. Kyle Sandiland's odds-on favourite for the, for the next Beast, would you think? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think he's made for the role if he yeah. lives that long. Uh, but Rex actually did uh, host Beauty and the Beast for a time after the club show ended. In 1971, the club show was given a break. I oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh And I was pitched into the Beast role in the long-running daytime panel show. My job was to ride roughshod over my panellists, being chauvinistic and obnoxious, which was not a problem. Their job was to fight back as the best they could, and we all enjoyed the verbal sparring. But the letters would drive me berserk. I stuck it out for three years, each week growing crankier and crankier as Thursday, taping day approached. At night, I would arrive home to Joan like a bloody raging bull. (laughs) Beauty and the Beast was dreadful garbage, but it was popular. More than 300,000 women a day all over Australia had nothing better to do than sit down and watch. (laughs) What a legend! I, I, but I, I, I just, I just love the idea of him like driving home in a rage <laughs> from taping Beauty and the Beast, getting home to his wife, like you know, throwing his spaghetti against the wall. I mean, he's enraged about the job that he signed up to do. <laughs> um, so, so he agrees to the role of, of playing that role, uh, embraces it, and then gets becomes a rage <laughs> But uh, but before you you know we're, we're making light of Rex, but you know he had so many achievements in life, and it shouldn't be forgotten what a what a serious sports broadcaster he was. And and I think this passage in the book really illustrates that. I packed my bags and jetted off to Mexico City for the Olympic Games of '68. Mexico City was a hole. 
a squalid place of poverty and disease. I came down with Montezuma's curse midway through the games. <laughs> it's a virus that gets in your bowel and gives you the run so bad that you need to go to the toilet 20 or 30 times a day. Ugh. It's an appalling and humiliating condition to have, but the show had to go on. Sometimes I just couldn't help it. I'd saw my pants while doing an interview, but I just had to disregard my discomfort and press on. What a disaster. I would wait until everybody left the stadium before I would get up to go. My briefcase strategically held to conceal my stained trousers. In Mexico City, professionalism took a whole new meaning for me. (laughs) What a trooper. (laughs) I mean... God. He's off his head. <laughs> um, what, was he, what was he like as a player? Did he? He, he, he was one like, thing about him is he was truly authentic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and and that's why I, I do genuinely have like so much respect for him. Um, I, I don't think the the feeling would be mutual. I think I <laughs> I'd be considered a bit of a pansy in in Rex's book. I don't think I don't think you can knock a sick girl off the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, so that, to, that, that bed sheet, we got a good look <laughs> up and down look from Rex. <laughs> yeah, um, so, so to your it, point, it, it, it was from that era, um, boys, of like the guy that was like like ready to to punch someone in the head, like like before yeah. anything, like, yeah. like the first reaction, yeah, like like fist cocked at all times. Like. Yeah. <laughs> he, he devotes almost a whole chapter to the precise manner in which his ears were cauliflowered. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so was he much of a player? Like, yeah, he, he was. He was like kind of a hard nosed forward. Yeah, and yeah, he played for Australia, a dual yeah, international. Yeah, yeah. He played for the Wallabies as well. So, yeah. you know, he he was yeah he he was a a, a solid player. Yeah, yeah. Like he's not regarded as one of the greats of the game, but you know, a solid he's career. A tough man. Yeah, yeah. Um, I th- I think that my favorite and the saddest passage of the book is towards so. Channel 7 had the rights to the footy until 82. They lost it in 83. Rex was out. Ray Warren uh, was was the host. After a few years, Channel 10 booted Ray Warren and got Rex back in. Right. But uh, almost from the start, it was just not a match, like, well made. Yep. And um, it's just so funny reading this book and seeing the writing on the wall. Like, as soon as he, like, walked in the Channel 10 doors and he just is oblivious to how he's at fault in any of it. Um, and, and this kind of goes into the Mossop way, this, this uh, antipathy for what Channel 10 was trying to do. For my money, 10 executives set too much faith in the power of razzmatazz. I fell out repeatedly with executives over their insistence with polluting the football telecast with American-style gimmicks like dancing girls, appearances by the station soap stars, and most of all, Wacker the Emu. Wacker was a product of the 10 publicity department. A bloke would climb into this ridiculous emu <laughs> suit and cavort around the sidelines during Monday night football. I had nothing against the poor bastard in the suit, but the whole idea of the emu ran deeply against my grain. <laughs> Got a point, doesn't he? he? He does, you know. I mean, I, I don't think I miss whack of the end <laughs> during my footy coverage. Um, this, this is the, the kind of beginning of the end for this incident for Rex at Channel 10. There was never, never any love lost between me and 10 management. I copped flack from the powers that be when viewers saw me throw my papers in the air in anger after learning that I may have to be in Seoul for the Olympics at the same time as the 88 league finals. (laughs) (laughs) What I want to know is, why was he told that on air? (laughs) Professionalism wasn't running deep on that occasion. It was... um... But like honestly, it's kind of touching. Like the bit about the Seoul Olympics. Like like anyone else in journalism would love to like travel the world. Or yeah, like, yeah. You know, and he's like, oh, he just wants to watch football. Like what a legend! I know. He's like, mate, have you seen Ellery Hanley carving up for the past four weeks? You think you want to miss that? <laughs> and uh, another occasion, he said, after announcing some Australian rules news on the Mossop report, I added jokingly, "If anyone out there is interested." Someone was interested. <laughs> a station executive took exception and hauled me over the coals. 
What you have to understand, he said, is that our station has certain financial affiliations with the VFL, and we will not stand by and let you jeopardise our association. When it was my turn, I pointed out to him that apart from my love of rugby league, I had no ties with any sporting body, and then told him what I'd been repeating to management for the past quarter of a century, that nobody was going to tell me what to do or say. (laughs) What a fucking legend! (laughs) I mean, just the AFL comment alone gave me a hard on. <laughs> <laughs> that response. I mean, he's one of those guys of that era where it was anything, everything they said goes, and if you disagree with them, you were disrespecting them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And as you said, there is something, well, you know, for people like us who love rugby league and, you know, feel a bit threatened by the barbarians at the gates from, you know, the grass ballet and the aerial ping pong and, you know, whatever else. It's, it's just good to have someone to, to just reassure you that it really is the greatest game of all. Absolutely. Yeah, so that was uh, Hate Foundation, which you can track down on iTunes uh, still. Um, that was our segment on Rex Moss. But one thing I just wanted to touch on, I, I hope the love for Rex came across in that because listening back to it, I, I kind of felt that maybe it, it seemed we were mocking Rex. Not in the slightest. No. He was a hard, hard man. Yeah. Just uh, It's just funny when someone's oblivious to their, uh, their hilarity. Yeah, yeah, and... Uh, his contribution to rugby league shouldn't be undersold. Getting it onto TV in the early '60s Absolutely. and, and be, being, you know, the face of rugby league for so many years, um, yeah, a, mu- a much missed rugby league legend. And a great, um, great career for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, playing wise, great, but mm. also uh, just great media career, yeah. putting money in that. Yeah, um, like you wouldn't have picked it, you know, if fifty nine, you know, Rex Moss or well, sixty, whenever he retired. You wouldn't have thought that three years later he was hosting like four hour sports shows on, on Channel Seven. Yeah, you amazing. know, like many more erudite rugby league players couldn't carve up the same career that he did. Mm-hmm.